Okay, so by now, hopefully, we've started to grow up. We've got a bit of an understanding around the global pressure cells, i.e. we can see here the Hadley cell, where we have low pressure as air rises at the equator and then sinks around the tropics. Um, and again, the same thing in the poles, where we have colder air sinking over the poles and rising over the mid latitudes kind of around the arctic circle um and around 60 degrees and actually this is one of the reasons that the uk has such varied weather because we can be influenced by either this polar cell which brings kind of cold uh, wet weather or by this feral cell which can bring kind of warmer dry weather um, but now to, for us to understand uh, what's going on in Malawi, we need to start kind of think, considering about where it is in the world. So Malawi sits in the Southern Hemisphere, we're like that last lesson, um, in this kind of space here. Okay, so normally it's, it's weather is governed by the Southern Hadley cell. Um, however, it's a little bit more complex because the Earth is on a tilt the earth's axis is tilted at about 23 degrees um, and this is what one of the reasons we get all of our seasons okay so if we go back to thinking about the uk for a moment in the summer the northern hemisphere um, is tilted towards the sun meaning the solar energy is more concentrated in the north therefore all of those global pressure cells just move a little bit further north so the Hadley cell shifts north the feral cell shifts north the polar cell shrinks okay this is because these are operating in the atmosphere and the atmosphere is not fixed okay so the that the Hadley cell, which starts where the sun's energy is most concentrated, migrates north in the summer. In the winter, the opposite's true. The southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, meaning the southern hemisphere receives more solar energy and the Hadley cell and the pressure cells migrate south. Okay, um, and the part of the Hadley cell uh, and the part of the pressure system that we're that we're kind of going to be most interested in at this stage is called, is known as the intertropical convergence zone. Okay, so this marks the boundary between the Hadley cells. Okay, it's also the area where these white arrows meet. These are known as the trade winds. Okay, so it's this area between the Hadley cells. Okay, so in the summer, the intertropical convergence zone between the Hadley cells moves north and in the winter the intertropical convergence zone moves south okay all due to the earth's tilt now what this means is that we get a wet season and a dry season in places and between the tropics and around the equator so if any of you have been to these kind of countries on holiday any of the ones between these white lines you will know that you have a wet season and you have a dry season, okay? Um, and these are the extremes. So here in January, we can see we can see the, uh, the the tilt of the earth means that the wet weather and and the, the kind of heavy rain follows this orange band. And in January, that air that kind of area of low pressure is sitting over Malawi. So in, in January is the peak of Malawi's wet season. So they're gonna have really heavy rain and most likely uh, flash floods, okay? However, in July, in the Northern Hemisphere's summer, as the uh, intertropical convergence zone, that band of low pressure migrates north, okay? We can see here that it's actually you know, places in the Caribbean that have their wet season and places in places more like Nigeria um, and India that are receiving this um, that area of low pressure, this heavy rain. So we often have uh, 
the monsoon, the heavy flooding in Mumbai in the summer. And that's due to this uh, migration of this band of low pressure. But that means in Malawi, all of that rain has shifted north. Therefore, they're going to experience that drought. OK, so their wet season is in January when this intertropical convergent zone sits above them. And their dry season is in July when this band of rain moves further north. OK, and you know, we can see this. Here's some images of, of Malawi. We can see here in the wet season, you know, this, this means there's lots of vegetation. We, we can see the kind of um, areas of, uh, kind of lakes and, and the rivers are, are much fuller and we get heavy flooding. But then in the dry season, you know, the vegetation dies back um, and, you know, much, much harder uh, to grow and, and much drier. You know, we have a drought. Um, since we're on the, the kind of topic of the geography of films, this is also the reason I feel sorry for Scar. OK, not many people say that, but I do feel a bit sorry for Scar. He just didn't get his geography right. OK, so in The Lion King, we have the same situation. Simba, Mufasa, they happen to be in charge during the wet season. In the wet season, there's loads of food around because the, the, you know, the antelope that eat the grass are there, the, the buffalo are there. OK, so the lions are all happy because there's lots of food. The hyenas are happy because there's lots of food. However, Scar takes over at the start of the dry season. Okay, it's not Scar's fault all the vegetation dies off. It's not the hyenas' fault all the vegetation dies off. But what happens is the vegetation dries off. We have a migration of animals like wildebeest and buffalo and antelope that eat the grass. They move with the rain because so they, they, you know, there's no vegetation to eat. So therefore the lions get hungry and the hyenas get hungry and then Simba happens to come back just at the time when the rains come. So of course he's got a much easier situation. He's managing a, situ well, a situation of plenty. There's lots of food. Lions are happy. Poor Scar, he has to manage it when there is no food. So and we all know when we're hungry, we get hangry. But anyway, um, Hopefully that's helped us understand a little bit about why Malawi has a wet season and a dry season.